Welcome to War Gear Reviews. Today, I'm gonna to show you how, why, and when you should be using Sony's Photo Pro app. So the first reason why you should be using this is because if you think about the phone market today, 10 people with iPhones stand outside Buckingham Palace, they all take a photo and they all get pretty much the same image. With the Sony phone, Sony are really pushing you to be creative and to learn a bit more about photography and really create your own style of image and give you all of the creative control. And to be honest with you guys, if you're using a Sony Xperia 1 or 1 Mark II or 5 or 5 Mark II and you're not using the Photo Pro app, shame on you. Because there's so many features that the Photo Pro app has that the standard app doesn't. And to be honest, you're not gonna get the most from this device unless you understand the basics of the Photo Pro app. And that's what I'm gonna do, is teach you guys the basics of the app, understanding what the different settings do and how to use the four main modes that it has and how to switch between RAW and HDR and D-Range Optimizer to get the best image for your scenario wherever you are and whatever the lighting conditions are so are you ready let's go so i've yet to find a video that really explains the sony photo pro mode nice and concisely and that is exactly what i'm going to try to do in this video for you guys so i hope you appreciate that and if you do give us a thumbs up and if you just subscribed you are now officially one of the finest subscribers known to man and I wanna shout out the Sony Xperia Reddit forum. There's loads of awesome Sony Xperia photography and loads of tips on there for you guys. So go check out that forum after this. And I've set myself a like goal for this video. My manual Sony Xperia 1 videos from last year got 650 likes. So I'm gunning for 750 likes. If you could help me get there, I'd greatly appreciate it. Anyway, let's get into it. There are four main modes to use in the Sony Photo Pro app. And as we progress through them step by step, they become more and more advanced. And as you learn how to use each of them, you become a better and more advanced photographer. So let's start with mode one, which is auto mode. There are two huge reasons why you should be using this over the standard camera app. Number one reason being the shooting mode. When it comes to photography, you know what you're expected to do, right? What do you expect me to do? Focus. And one of the killer features on the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II is the 20 frames per second continuous auto focus mode and using the Photo Pro app in auto mode is the easiest way to use this feature. All you do is use the function menu, tap this icon here, toggle on continuous shooting high and you're ready to go. You've also got the 10 frames per second continuous shooting and self timers which will be useful later on in the video and I'll explain why so make sure you stick around. So the second huge reason to replace your camera app and use the Photo Pro Auto mode instead is the ability to shoot in RAW. Most phones will shoot in JPEG as standard and with the file sizes of those photos being around 3.5 megabytes. Now when you shoot in RAW on the Xperia 1 Mark II, you get a 24 megabyte RAW file, which is around seven times more image data than a JPEG holds. So essentially, if you're taking photos and you plan to color grade them afterwards or throw filters on them in Instagram or make any changes to them at all, you're gonna get a way better final result if you shoot in RAW. And because of the amount of data held in that RAW file, it just gives you more creative freedom when it comes to modifying the image after you've taken it. Now, a couple of side notes here. You cannot use the continuous autofocus shooting if you're in RAW, you have to be in JPEG, and that's because of the size of the files. And another feature you have here in the Photo Pro app that you don't in the standard app is the ability to toggle on and off face and eye auto tracking. And the reality is the only time that you'd want to do this is when you're not taking photos of people or your pets. So imagine you've set up a beautiful landscape shot and suddenly somebody walks past and then the phone starts tracking that person instead of the nice scenery that you set your camera up to take the photo of. That is literally the only time you wanna switch it off. Okay, now mode two, slightly more advanced with the program auto mode. So this opens up nine new features that we didn't see in the auto mode. And don't be discouraged here, stick with it, trust me, it will all make perfect sense and you will become a better photographer. The number one and two reasons you would want to use this mode is for the auto HDR 
and a dynamic range optimizer. Now Auto HDR is what you need if you have a very bright backlight or just a general bright lighting condition. And what Auto HDR will do is essentially take a series of exposures and it will stitch them together, giving you a more balanced image. So if you're taking a photo of a sunset or a sky where there's a lot of light coming towards the camera, you will need to use Auto HDR or D-Range Optimizer. Now the Dynamic Range Optimizer is slightly different. It takes a single exposure and then tries to figure out what areas should be bright and what areas should be less bright. And it kind of does it that way instead of taking several exposures. I prefer Auto HDR. Now most phones will do Auto HDR standard in the stock camera app. However, the Sony devices don't. So this is the only way you can access it. This is why it's so important to use this mode for those particular scenarios. And a very important side note here, in order to use Auto HDR or Dynamic Range Optimizer, you have to be shooting in JPEG. So those are the two main features that you need to know about with this program auto mode. But there are a few more things I just wanna run through before we move on to the next one. This is a new feature, you can lock the focus. So essentially, if you push this button here, AF on, it essentially mimics the half push of the shutter button. So it will continuously track or stay fixed on the subject that you've put in front of it if you toggle that on. And you can also lock the exposure values with this AEL, automatic exposure lock. So even if we change the arrangement in front of the camera, the software will try to maintain the same exposure values that you set before you push the lock button. And we have this massive slider here at the top to adjust the exposure values. And just so you understand what this does, let me draw your attention to the histogram here on the screen. The histogram represents the tones and the brightness that are hitting the image sensor. If we shift the EV to the left, we darken the image and you can see the histogram shifts to the left, indicating that it's too dark. If we shift the exposure value dial all the way to the right, you'll see the histogram bunches up on the right hand side, indicating that probably it's too bright. Now you can mess around with this to get a creative look, but what you really wanna have is nice smooth curves on that histogram and not too bunched up on one side or the other unless you're going for that particular look. Now check this out, another new feature. The histogram is showing us the light measured across the entire photo right now. What if we wanna just concentrate on the subject at the center of the photo? And we don't care about the brightness or the shadows or anything else in the image, just that subject in the center. We can toggle the metering mode to center or spot. And what this will do is force the phone to measure the light just from where we want it to. So we have a bit more control and a bit more understanding in that particular part of the image that we want to capture. Now the next new feature is ISO and I recommend at this point, if you're using this mode, leave it on auto. But what it essentially does is increases the sensitivity of the image sensor. So you can brighten up the image with this and we'll come back to this later on. But anyway, once you've got everything how you want it to be, you can then lock your exposure value using the new AEL feature, which is right there under the slider. Now this is the last new feature I wanna show you before we move on to the next one. And it's an important one it's white balance settings. So basically what this will allow you to do is adjust the white balance to a warmer or cooler tone or change the tones completely and go more magenta or even green if you wanted to. But the best advice I can give to you, try and match up the colors that you're seeing on your phone with what your eye is seeing. The closer you can get it, the better. And if you're shooting in RAW, you can always get real creative after the fact but you wanna try and get the most natural colors. Just mess around with this little grid here and the little arrows until you find where you want it to be. And if you don't wanna mess with this at all, leave it on auto white balance or try some of the presets. But the best thing about program auto mode is you could leave absolutely everything in auto and test things out gradually one by one until you figure out exactly what it's doing to the image. It really is a great mode for practicing with.